I would like to welcome to the Creative Marketing Podcast, Sean Adams from Integra Consulting. And he's going to share with us some very interesting ideas that I think there's been a little bit of buzz lately. I've been seeing it more and more about the power of LinkedIn, but there's something I have a feeling that Sean's going to express um, that I think is really important. And that is that a lot of creatives are just looking at the business of LinkedIn and not the creative opportunities there. And so with that, let me introduce Sean Adams. Welcome to the show. Hey, Rosh. Thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate the opportunity. Oh, hey, I appreciate you uh, knocking on my door. And you know, I'm going to start this off taking a left on you, okay? Sure. And I want to share with everybody why, because this is important, I think, that you'll be able to bring into the conversation why I'm having Sean on the show. First of all, I get a lot of requests to be on podca the podcast um, from a lot of different people. But there's something Sean actually did that I appreciated. And I can see, because we're on video, that he's really scared. <laughs> and that, no, that what he did was what he should do. He, he actually reached out in a very personal manner. In other words, it wasn't all business. I mean, it is business, and there's a tactic in the approach he took, but it was real. In other words, my name is not hi. My name's not hello. It's not howdy. It's Rosh. <laughs> and, and he actually took the approach to take some time to look at what I do and even connect it to his personal life, where I'm sure he does when he can. And when he can't, you know, you just do what you can to write a real note. And I'm sure that also jumps over into the social world, into LinkedIn, into what we're talking about today. And that is how creatives can can you know, take advantage of what LinkedIn has to offer. So let me just start with that, Sean. How can creatives take advantage of what they may not be taking advantage of today? Sure, sure. And I appreciate those kind words. Uh, that's sort of the first approach we try to teach any of our clients uh, from the coaching and consulting world. If we had one tagline, it would be be human because that is the biggest thing that gets left off in the virtual world of Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest. People see ads, they see banners, they don't see any human behind that. But the reality is, if they're going to buy from anyone, they want to connect with someone on the other end of that. They don't buy from Coca-Cola, you're buying from a rep, or you're buying from someone personally that has that connection. We know we all buy emotionally. So that's right. a big buy-in that we try to do. And that's, that's the, the, one of the largest things I try to explain, especially to creative people, who their brain initially goes to advertising and putting marketing campaigns out there in a reactive sense and hoping that the business kind of trickles down to them. And the pro proactive approach that we take really allows people to say, hey, you can use a platform like LinkedIn and you can actually be taking an outreach strategy, connecting with people that you think might be viable for your business and stimulating conversation, finding common ground, maybe their background, their experience, or what from your background and experience is relevant to them, and really put that into the conversation because that's going to come out human. What we try to teach people is act like there is not a screen in between you. If you were in person or met them at a restaurant or a networking event, would you say the thing you're about to type? And if the answer is no, then don't send it because it becomes extremely tough uh, from a genuine standpoint for people to buy into you if you're just spewing features and benefits and all that kind of thing because no one cares about any of that. They want to know, you know why you're a real person, why it's important for them to be able to connect with you. So having that real genuine human connection, that's what really comes through and it connects with people emotionally. Same thing applies on LinkedIn and it's the best aggregator for those conversations you know, rather than the funnels and a lot of the more diluted efforts on the other platforms. Right. You know, I often talk about networking in general. Um, and, uh, and we've all been at that networking event where you see somebody walk into the room with a big old stack of business cards and they hand them to every person they can possibly see. If they get a hello in, hey, you're lucky. You almost had a conversation. And then they're out the door. Yeah. And not only that, they leave thinking they were networking. And, right. and it's crazy. It, it, they're, th I would rather spend time with three people than a hundred people and have gotten to know them and really have connected with them. So how would you suggest people do that on, on LinkedIn? How aggressive this should they be? Um, how, how would they know it's success? What, what would be a success metric when you're not playing the numbers so much, but you always are in some respect, but how would you approach it? Absolutely. Right. So if we're looking at something like uh, Facebook ads that you're putting out there, the reason that that gets diluted so much is because people try to take that 
numbers game approach. Well, if I just spend X amount of dollars on ad spend, I'm going to get in front of 5,000 people or I have 5,000 followers on Instagram. The amount of times we've had coaching calls and people say this to us and I say, well, how much revenue do you drive off of that? Like, well, really not very much. I'm like, okay, well, that's not a viable source for you though. If you go on LinkedIn, you could reach out and pinpoint targeting five specific directors of whatever you know is going to be relevant for you the decision maker behind your product or service and have a real conversation with them that have the ability to actually buy what you're selling you know mm -hmm. if you're selling on those other platforms you're connecting with consumers you're not able to do that so you could have a much smaller sample size and have a real conversation with them and using the software a lot of it can be automated now and you can do it in a really genuine human way, as we mentioned, and still be able to connect with them and say, hey, if you're having this problem and you're, they look at your profile and realize you've helped other people that are similar to them and you speak well to their audience and you can work them through a really natural conversation and say to them, hey, would it be okay if we hopped on a quick call, maybe grab a little more information about what's going on, you know, allow us to introduce what we're able to do for you give you some case studies, those sort of things, and then walk it through that so that you're actually connecting with them and showing that you've done this before. And if you're a creative person, the real advantage is the profile section allows you to really build a personal brand from the banner photos to the taglines, the uh, summaries, they've expanded upon the education and the work history sections as well. So you can really dive deep into what has happened in your past or what you've done that can really be relevant to them and can help them to connect on that level. And they can go, wow, okay, you know, this person knows what they're talking about. Let's get on a call and at least see if this is an option for me. Yep. How, how, how important do you think all that information is that people can put on LinkedIn? I mean, it's fundamentally it, important. It yeah. really is because it's, it's your walking billboard for, you know, showing exactly what you help to do. And it can be done in that subtle manner that is not broadcasting. You know, it's not, right grabbing an email list online and spamming 10,000 people and hoping five of them respond because this is you being hyper specific to who you help and how you help them. And somebody to see that and go, okay, that trigger word or that pain point makes a lot of sense. Let's go ahead and reach out to this person or at least follow them so that the content that you're putting around will actually position you as a thought leader and the algorithms on LinkedIn will be in your favor. They, they assign what's called a social selling index, which is an aggregate score of all these different factors on your LinkedIn from the audience that they think that you help. And it will actually put you in front of more people that have that type of tagline. If your profile speaks right to them and you're using keyword sensitive information, just like you would do in SEO that people would be searching for. So it's really important to put all that information on your profile, you know, and have it speak to them directly. Interesting. I, that's interesting the way you put the, uh, now what, what did you call that? The, uh, how they figure out in terms of the algorithm, put you in front of the right person. The, the social selling index is something that they, um, they balance uh, to be your content you put together, how much original, uh, the articles, the shares mm -hmm. you put together, the people that you're connecting with, whether right. they're reaching out to you or you're reaching out to them, how many, uh, it's the percentages of exception requests, the messages. If you're sending tons and tons of messages and no one's answering, your score is going to go down because obviously it's not connecting. You're not engaging people at a high level. Yeah, activity. Um, you know, exactly. one of the things in, in what we, we refer to as link, uh, not link, um, channel building is the whole idea how important activity is. And I was just looking through LinkedIn today and they sh give you the suggestion of all these um, people that you, and they have a little score percent activity percentage and it goes in order from top to bottom the most you know active all the way down you see that percentage drop 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 and that that is a big tell in sure. terms of what they're looking for and how important engagement is on on your page and it's true on every platform but i often don't think about that with linkedin but it was really obvious that that is an important factor for linkedin for sure for sure. Yeah. And it goes as a great compliment to what you're already doing. So content as a whole, for the most part, is very, um, it's going to be reactive. You're going to be putting it out there, hoping you add some value. People are, st you're keeping top of mind with people. They're seeing that, okay, they're giving away some things. This person obviously knows what they're talking about in that sense. Um, you give away a guide or a quick video, or you're building a LinkedIn group around a particular topic. All those things are going to be you know, more of the um, passive approach to that. So when you combine that with a direct message, 
and you're being able to do that, that complementary aspect on LinkedIn is really what scores you a lot higher and allows you to um, have people see you because it's going to be an exposure thing as well. You can reach out to them, but you want to be found as much as you want um, to be finding your clients. Sure. Now you mentioned uh, LinkedIn groups. Now I was, I got involved in LinkedIn groups maybe a few years ago, um, slowly fade. A lot of them seem to fade. Do you, do you see a resurgence in LinkedIn groups or do you think they never, never die? It's just maybe the groups I happen to be in. What, what are your thoughts on that and the power, especially compared to how Facebook groups have been growing so much as of late? Sure, sure. So LinkedIn groups have had a strange trajectory. They started pretty um, rudimentary in their fashion. They put a lot of time and effort into the updates and they plan to going into 2019 as well. Um, what's been powerful is the ability to um, pick a really specific topic to build around on LinkedIn. And what we've been doing with some of our clients is in the outreach strategy, pushing uh, the, the prospects that you're working with into a LinkedIn group where you're providing that value on the private level. So it's helpful in that sense that if you're giving away free content and you can give it away in a specific form inside that group, it gives people a reason to stick in there and a reason to comment and to respond and to post questions and things of that nature. So while I would say it's not as powerful as Facebook groups, if you are selling in the B2B space or to professional services, the director level of a company and above, LinkedIn is where they are congregating. It's where people are going. It's business facing. You're not going to have a lot of fluff of those holiday postcards and videos and all those other things in there. It's going to be people looking to find clients, find employees, or find partners of some sort. So if you can keep them on that platform and then add them to a group where you can make it a really useful and give them a reason to stay in that, yeah. it's going to be really powerful. And uh, we've seen a lot of success with, um, again, staying top of mind and yep. continuing to be that industry expert, you know, within a group. Yeah, it, you know, top of mind, that, that's a word that uh, I've used a lot over the last 10 plus years, especially when dealing with social media. We've, we've often talked about, when I first started speaking on social media, I would be in front of groups with their arms folded, you know, okay, give it, tell, tell me about this. You know, we're talking 10 years ago and they're, they're like, this, this is ridiculous. And I say, you know, one of the biggest things, problems or issues that salespeople for thousands of years have had a problem with is follow-up. When to follow up? How can you stay in front of that person and not be that person? And, and now you have something that's putting you top of mind regularly without being intrusive on their own time. And what you're telling me is you don't have time for this. We've been waiting for thousands of years for this, and now you don't have time. Now, obviously, people have gotten more wise to that, but it's still an important element. You, you mentioned top of mind, staying top of mind. I think some people have lost that, that basic concept that it seems normal today, but it's still important, and you do need to be active to stay top of mind, which is what we were talking about earlier. Another area is collaboration that is so important with developing, you know, just a community and, and yeah. connecting with the right people. Why don't you expand on that idea? I know that's an area you'd like to uh, talk about. What, what, what are some areas and how would you like, how do you recommend p creatives, uh, small business people approach collaboration, especially on LinkedIn? Sure, sure. Yeah, I think it's an extremely powerful tool if you look at uh, the fact that there just there shouldn't be any competition. You shouldn't be looking at other people out there as if my product has to outcompete them. You know, unless you're you know Apple and Google and you're competing at that level. Otherwise, there's so much opportunity out there. It's very short-sighted to just say that I need to succeed by someone else failing. It's not a zero-sum game. So, right. kind of looking at this at that community or the networking approach is you helping other people with no reason or no expectation of the reciprocal of that. And when you do that wholeheartedly and you act human and you're being genuine, as we're trying to pull a thread through this conversation, that's how it's really going to help others. So just the reason we're on this podcast, it's right. going to be helpful for you to have me on the show. It's extremely yeah. helpful for me to be on your show. So those collaborative efforts are really important. And I think a part of what we bring to the table for our clients is that creative mindset, looking at what is going on in your business development efforts and finding unique opportunities in there that don't directly 
require ad spend or a new platform or a new, new uh, gadget that they need to buy. It's more of finding some sort of bridge, whether that's a human, another vendor, a supplier, another company that speaks to that same audience and collaborating with them. So in the creative space, if you are doing marketing, I'm, I'm sorry, um, let's say you're doing like uh, real estate photography for, for realtors or something else, and maybe you know event planners are part of that or you're doing some other uh, type of collaboration in that sense, you're going to be able to help everyone and raise the level of the playing field by giving everyone enough business, having everyone pick their specialty and then connecting on that level. LinkedIn is a great place to be able to not only find prospects and clients, but connect to other partners that can help you and you can help them. And I promise if you go into that with that open-mindedness, they're going to introduce you to people in their network and they see that you help X type of company, they're gonna reach out and connect that for you because you're giving that same you know, approach back to them. So very powerful in that sense. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Partnerships, I mean, that I've grown more than one company just with the right partners, you know, we each are targeting the same audience, but offer something of value that's a little different enough that we go in together. And sometimes we share clients and sometimes we find each other clients. It, it all depends. But yeah, having, I have found that to be more powerful than actually going out and finding direct clients, yeah. finding partners that you, again, you got to, it's got to go both ways. Otherwise the partnership will not last long, but it certainly is a, Excellent growth tactic, and I found it very good, especially creatives. I mean, I think a lot of times creatives aren't thinking of that. I think you were right that a lot of times we're thinking it's all about, you know, the, the competition. And in, in our mantra as of lately, the, late there is no competition anymore. It, the market, especially in the photography world, so saturated that competition is irrelevant. Yeah. If you start thinking about competition, you're just you're going to drive yourself crazy and you're going to go down to the lowest common denominator that's going to put you out of business. So just compete against yourself. It's about absolutely. it because everybody with a cell phone is your competition. Right, absolutely. So, so with that, let's kind of go into the whole idea. I, I do want to talk very specifically um, about LinkedIn video, but I would like your perspective of how a creative, especially photographer, can use the, the portfolio sections that I think a lot of people aren't even thinking about. Uh, I mean, they've collaborated with, is it Behance? Is that their, is that the, yes. yeah. And I, and I say that questionly because with a question, because it's probably been since the first collaborator <laughs> that I put something up and haven't looked back. And that's my failure to do it right. So share some ideas of what we can do and how we can take advantage of that. And definitely let's circle back around on LinkedIn video. For sure, for sure. So video, as we know, just like, um, you know, things on Facebook and, and Instagram, it converts at a much higher level. People want to see your face. They hear you speaking. It's just there's something uh, very intuitive about that. It's the closest thing we have to being in person, right? So that's the ability of LinkedIn and why it's so powerful or these different platforms because you can do that. So on a platform like LinkedIn, being so business facing, a lot of it can, the content can be kind of dry, can be a little bit of, uh, you know, infographics and measurements and shared articles. And some of those efforts can be not overly stimulating. So if you are a creative person, you have ability to brand your content, you have quality videos and, and photography and uh, messaging copy that makes sense and it's quick and converts well when people are scrolling through a feed, you're going to connect very well. Your score is gonna be raised because you're putting quality content that's getting that. And LinkedIn has in their algorithm a way that they break down every single post that gets put on. That little buffer time when you post a video and it takes maybe 60 seconds to 120 seconds, their algorithm is running a series of parameters on that, figuring out who they should put this in front of, what's viral about it, if anything, and why they should really push it to your connections among others. So it's extremely important to show that you are not, be, again, being salesy and pushing the wrong message out there, but the video converts so much higher compared to a long drawn out 2000 word article that no one has time to read. But if you can give somebody a one or two minute snippet of value or just a, a project that you're working on with no, overly overt call to action, something that as you're going, you're trying to build a brand around this, you know, as you start to move people through a pipeline, sure, you're, you're gonna wanna have an action for them to do, but it's really about trying to get them stimulated with that. And then once they're seeing your face and then they see that you're messaging them directly and saying, hey, you know, we help you with this, what are some of the problems you're experiencing in your business? It's a collaborative effort from your outreach strategy and they're seeing you in multiple positions, again, keeping you top of mind. So it's really helpful, video's a, a top priority when you're putting content together. 
Yeah. It, one, one thing I, well, you may, you may not have the, the answer to this. Maybe you haven't had this with um, experience with your client. So feel free to just pass on this one. But one of the elements of YouTube is, is watch time. It's probably the most important metric. Do you see that value in LinkedIn? And what I mean by that is we, we often will say, well, people don't have time, so they just want short videos. But that, that's not what really gets, or even, even true with blog posts. You say, well, let me create short blog posts because people don't have time. Well, yeah, but they don't see them as authoritative enough and they don't share them and they don't, you know, the little blog posts, unless it, that's the only answer and that's it, usually more is better in terms of, you know, the algorithm type of sharing. And so obviously there's a limit of 10 minutes with video. Um, have you seen any difference between say a one minute, two minute video to filling up the time to 10 minutes and how it, it's reacted to, or at least shared by the algorithm because people are on it longer? Sure. So I won't speak directly to the algorithm because that's not within my realm of understanding about how you it You don't know works. all the algorithm? What's, what, come on. I, I, right. I have X. No, I'm just kidding. Well, since this conversation started 20 minutes or so, it's probably changed six times. Yes, so, you know, exactly really right. Time but, but that's the reality of this. And it's about making that quality there. So our your suggestion, experience is fine. Yes. Right. Right. So our suggestion is that the uh, one to three minute range works really well for delivering one topic of interest, whatever that is, if you're speaking to an audience, you're trying to be an authority, that one to three minutes gives you enough time to just cover a couple of points about that topic, what you suggest they should do or why you're bringing it up in the first place. If you're getting in front of the camera like this versus right. something promotional, um, we find that to deliver a lot higher because it's a news feed and it's an activity basis. If someone's on YouTube, typically they're searching for something, right? right. They're going to be typing in, how do I X, Y, and Z? Or on LinkedIn on the news feed, they're actually scrolling through there. They're looking at job changes and networkers that they can grab and everything else. You're trying to grab their attention. And by doing that on the short videos, they see your face. If it's well quality and you're speaking you know, correctly and clearly, it's going to deliver well. So we really suggest the shorter videos in that sense and, and increasing the volume of how often you're doing them and, and connecting those videos. Don't make them sort of um, all silos. If you're doing let's say it's November and you're going to do four topics once per week, make them congruent, make them have a way to tie into each other. So someone knows what to look for on tomorrow's video or next right. week's video right. that keeps them engaged. And you don't have to have this long drawn out process while you're going about it. No, that, that, that's a very good point. And something um, again, in the whole channel building element, you know, encouraging people finding a way because the one thing each platform wants is for people to stay on the platform. Not only if you can keep them on the platform, but they come back, on, onto that platform because of you, you are rewarded. And by doing exactly what you said, giving something to come back to or, or binge watch, you mean sure. each, each one to the other, you'll be rewarded for that. And, and I think actually the comparison probably is more, more to Facebook than uh, YouTube, just because people, again, just as you pointed out, are, it's a media stream. People just kind of going through, people do not People watch eight seconds of Facebook and that's about it. And, and you don't have much more where people watch a half hour on YouTube. And I, I would assume you know, it's probably the same scenario with LinkedIn. You're going to get the same results. You got to get their attention right away and keep them for a couple of minutes. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any important information you think uh, that maybe we have not covered that you think a, a creative a photographer should know when approaching LinkedIn as a, another social platform that they should consider maybe a, of just, you know, one big takeaway that, you know, if you had one thing to tell somebody why you need to go over there now and take the time, it's not the resume you put up 10 years ago and left. It is much more than that. Right, right. So I would say that the, plat the, um, the profile on the platform is extremely important, as we talked about. And if you can really dive deep into the, they allow you to add multimedia links on there. If you have a portfolio of videos you've made or client testimonials, any kind of reviews, things of that nature, recommendations, if you can put those things on there, obviously that's going to you know, position you as the expert, show that you know what you're talking about. And people are going to be seeing that and it's gonna, it's gonna resonate well with them. And then I would highly consider the platform on the outreach section and not just looking at the newsfeed where you're just putting information out there and hoping people 
connect on it. The outreach is extremely important. That's what we teach with our coaching and consulting, reaching out to those clients and stimulating those conversations because the first thing they're going to do is go, who the heck is this person? They're going to click on your profile and they're going to have now a summary of your work experience. Maybe you were an intern for a company and you pulled this set of skills out there. Remember, all of this is going to be client facing. You want it to be solving their problems. You're not sending this for a postcard for your mom where you're trying to summarize you know, all your information, the, the funny, you know, things that you've done in your life, you need to make sure there's, it's relevant to them. And if you can do that, it does not cost anything. There's no ad spend with LinkedIn. If you're taking this approach or being very proactive, um, there's obviously advertising and banners and photos you can put up there and pay for, but you can do the majority of this for low cost or nothing at all, just by putting the legwork in and connecting with the right people that are in your target market and making sure that your profile reflects your messaging that that's congruent in that as well that's the biggest takeaway and you can really just have a constant stream of new business if you are consistent with that um you know week in week out let that build on the on the previous week yeah time or money you got you have one or the other and uh use them um so your you have a, a training and and so sean has a training at linked-leverage.com and why don't you tell us a little bit about that um, that's one of the things I wanted to share. I didn't want to just give everybody the expert and say, okay, good luck. You know, it's, it's nice to have somebody who has an offering that can actually say here, you want more information and full disclosure. I get nothing. <laughs> if you decide to hire him, this, this, he is invited on my podcast as a guest, as an expert, but he does have an opportunity for you to expand uh, on this. And so Sean, will you share that? Sure. So we broke down our offering into three tiers. We have a DIY version, which is the online training. It's just a course you can break down as a series of, of uh, modules on there, best practices, copy and paste templates for the messaging, um, how to optimize your profile, how to go through and have um, something unique to put in front of your market, some sales strategies, things like that. So um, if you're looking to kind of implement that on your own, that's the, the program for you. The, the second tier is if you're looking for a little more handholding, some one-on-one -on -one coaching, we have a platform where we take the training and we work with you for five weeks. We go on one hour calls. We break down your ex exact scenario. We identify any blind spots that you're having in your business. Make sure your offering fits on LinkedIn well, and we kind of hone that with you and work one-on-one. -on -one. And then for the companies at the corporate level who are looking for full management, we have a managed service where we'll actually take over your account. So it just depends on where you are in that stream. I usually like to start people on the um, DIY version or going right for the, the coaching where they can kind of get an understanding and have an idea where they want to know why it's applicable for their business and why it's helpful. So we have a free 15 minute consult, just hop on the phone, we go through your scenario, make sure that we're the right fit and that LinkedIn's the right fit. Some you know, if you're selling consumer products, right, that are, you know, under $100, LinkedIn's probably not going to be the best use of your time, but there are platforms that'll be better for you. So it's just about making sure that it's, it's you know, the best fit for you. And we're happy to uh, go through a conversation to get there. Sounds good. Great. Well, Sean, thank you so much for taking the time to visit with our community. And um, I appreciate your, your insight. It, it is very helpful. LinkedIn is an area that I mean, really, since Microsoft purchased it, has made some big changes that I think a lot of people are seeing the benefits to, which probably everybody's, what, Microsoft did what? <laughs> but I, I think this time, at least so far, has been working out well. And, and thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. We really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.